Let's take a look at the ledger accounts or the T-accounts for a standard costing system. Now don't be afraid of T-accounts. Um, just picture the flow of goods. So from we, when we buy the material to where it's used in production until it's finished and then stored in finished goods and then sold. So we're going to look at that same process. We've done it in job costing. We've done it in process costing. So let's look at the um, ledger accounts for a standard costing system. So here we've got the information for material. So we've got a flexed budget. So we say we have actual units produced of 1,100. We've already flexed the budget. So um, our standard cost is made up of a standard quantity of one kilogram uh, per unit and then standard price of 10 per kilogram. So it's a standard cost of 10. And that's where the 11,000 came from. And then we have the actual here on the right hand side um, the actual kilograms, 1,210, we can divide the two to get a actual price per kilogram that was paid. And then in the middle, we have the actual quantity of input at the standard price. And that'll, that gave us a price variance of 605. That's favorable because we paid less per kilogram than what we should have paid. And we have a quantity variance that's unfavorable because we used more than what we should have used. So we used 1,210 kilograms and we should have used one kilogram per unit, so 1,100 kilograms. So let's see how we can record this from the start. So we've got bank, because we need to buy material. So we've got a material control account. We'll have a work and process account. So that's the factory. That's where we allocate all the costs to until it's finished. And then it goes to finished goods. And then we can sell it when, when it goes to cost of sales. Okay. So let's start off with buying the materials. So let's assume we pay cash for it. So how much do we pay? We actually buy 1,210 kilograms at 950. So we pay 11,495. So we created our bank account. Now what happens to the 1,210 kilograms? So say we put it in a shopping trolley and we actually push it um, to our warehouse and now it goes to the material control account on the debit side. So we put in on the debit side 1,210 kilograms. But remember, we are using a standard costing system to value our inventory. And material is part of our inventory, so we will value our inventory at our standard cost. It's a material. Remember, material is part of our inventory. We'll have a category of inventory called material on our balance sheet. And since we value all our inventory at standard cost, we will put it here in the storeroom at standard cost per kilogram, 10 per kilogram. So that's 12,100. And that's what we have here in the middle column. But now you'll say, well, our T accounts don't balance. We don't have the same amount of credits and debits. So where did the difference go? And the difference is this 605. So we'll open a new account. Uh, that's our material price variance account. This is account in the income statement or the statement of profit and loss. And we, to balance these, uh, the debits and credits, we need another credit of 605. Because we have one credit there of 11,000. We have a debit of 12,000. So we need this credit of 605. So it's favorable. And that is our variance. And it's in the income statement. So that means it's a positive effect on our profit. We saved 605 by buying at a lower price of 950. Now we use the material. So next transaction, we go to the storeroom. Um, we use all our material, uh, so we take out 1,210 kilograms and we take it out at standard price because it's already valued at standard price, so we have nothing left. We could have used only some of it, but let's assume we used all of it, so there's no inventory left. If we used only some of it, we would have had a closing balance of material that is valued at standard price, at the standard cost. But now let's assume we used all of it. So we take it to the factory. Now, this is the important part. Remember, work in process is also a type of inventory that is valued at standard cost. So everything in the work in process account has to be at standard cost. That means a standard quantity must apply and the standard price. 
And how many units did we start? We started 1100 units. And the standard cost per unit is 10. So it's one kilogram per unit, the quantity, standard quantity, times the standard price of 10. So times 10, and that equates to 11,000. And that is our flexible budget column. So work in process is always our flexible budget column. Because everything in the work in process account has to be at standard cost, which means standard quantity times standard price. So again, we have a difference here. We have a debit here that is smaller than our corresponding credit. So we need more debits to balance this. And that goes to a new account called material usage variance or quantity variance. We can call it a quantity variance. It doesn't matter. And that's also an income statement account. All the variances are income statement or statement of profit and loss accounts. And we need an, a more of a debit to balance um, with the credit. And that would be 1,100. It's a debit. So it's negative effect on our profit because we used more kilograms than what we should have used. We should have used 1,100 kilograms. We did use 110 kilograms more. And this is where the expense goes uh, to the material usage variance in the statement of profit and loss. And this is what will happen with all the other costs as well. So uh, go over this slowly, make sure that you understand it. There's a good chance that you won't be asked to do the T accounts in an exam, but it's very good to understand this because then if you can't do the T accounts, it means there's something in your understanding that's still missing. You might be able to get the, the, the answers by luck or by memory, but if you, don't, if you can't do the T accounts, then there might be something you're understanding that's lacking that might um, catch you out in a, in a question.